Welcome to Learning Unit 1 of End User Computing A. We're starting with personal computers and I'm Julian. In this learning unit we're going to be talking about the following things. Types of computers, what is a computer, how we get input into the computer, how input gets tra translated to output, what output is, the two kinds of storage that we can have, the permanent storage itself and the storage device permit which shows devices that you can use within that context. We're going to talk about how to set up the computer and basic functionality of the computer. So historically computers were very large, room full large we're talking now. As time went by they became smaller and smaller and in the current generation we have what we think of as large and medium and small computers. Large computers now are desktops which are basically personal computers. Medium sized are laptops. These are smaller generally than desktops and they can fit in your lap and you can work with them any way you like so long as you have battery power and we finally have handhelds which are about the size of your palm. Again they also are governed by how much battery power you give the handheld. So to define a computer now that we know the sizes the computer has a reasonably loose definition. It's an electronic multi-purpose device that can take input process the input, give the input back as output in the form of information and then store the results and that would be a computer. Now lots of things but the definition of a computer. A handheld tablet would fall under the idea of a computer whereas for example a microwave might not simply because um, while input is going in, the food is going in, and there is a kind of a process. It's not strictly speaking related to um, information that we can use later on. We're going to eat the food but that's not really a type of process that we're talking about. Um, input comes in common types and uncommon types. The common types we're going to talk about are keyboards and mice. You see a lot of those. In humans the input generally maps to the five senses touch, taste, smell, hearing and so on. But in computers input is anything that creates data. Um, the data then is input via the computer through the keyboard or the mouse and we can have other inputs as well. We don't see these a lot but they do exist. Scanners, a scanner is really half of a printer. It takes in pictures but it never prints them out and it stores those on your computer. A trackball is kind of like a mouse but it's upside down. Instead of holding the mouse like you would you'd be holding the bottom part of the mouse, the actual rubber ball, and you'd be working with that and the two, as you can see there, I've got a left mouse button and a right mouse button. You can also have USB based input devices. Now, over there I have a storage device drawn, but lots of devices now, keyboards, mice, and that sort of thing, are coming in USB type flavors. Your game controllers, these are also input devices since they're controlling your guy in a computer game. Input goes in and then turns into output and the output has to come in human type manner. So it can't be a 0 to a 1 which is the smallest kind of input that you can have in a computer. It's got to be a letter or sound or something visual like a picture. So a 0 to a 1 goes in. A 0 to a 1 is a bit. When you string 8 noughts and 1's together you get a byte. You can translate that byte into a number as you can see with my chart over there. 
and the number will then map to a human letter like A or B or C and that is how we end up with usable output. In humans, us, output is speech and touch and all the ways that we um, say yes I have received your input and acknowledge it. In computers, output is basically processed data so it's information. Computers normally take your input shunt it through a thing called a computer card especially if it's in the case like we can see there monitors and speakers and turns the um, noughts and ones into things that we can understand like sound. Sound is not represented in noughts and ones it's represented as audio. So three common devices we can have for output a monitor and they have listed two types a cathode ray tube type monitor or a flat screen and you can have a printer which prints paper out we've listed there that you've got dot matrix and laser jet and inkjet type printers you got to also bear in mind that printers care about your dots per inch and then we've listed speakers the final kind of output that I'm going to talk about is really something of an input and an output. It's called a modem. A modem is basically a modulator and a demodulator put together. It turns sound from the telephone system into noughts and ones or it takes the stuff on your computer files that you want to send, movies that you want to um, upload through YouTube and so on and turns those into noughts and ones. Um, so the file ends up turning into noughts and ones on your side and then through the modem it goes in, becomes sound or video or whatnot and that goes through the regular phone system. When we talk about storage, we talk about storage in terms of the size permit. A bit is a naught or a one. So it is the smallest possible unit. A byte is eight of those bits strung together as we saw a couple of slides back. A kilobyte is 1024 bytes. A megabyte then is 1024 kilobytes and a gigabyte is 1024 megabytes. These then map to storage devices that we use a lot. Um, a bit is a letter, a kilobyte is words, a megabyte is books that we will store on disks or CD-ROMs, and a gigabyte is many books which we'll store on a hard disk or a USB device. When you're setting up your computer once you've got it, you have to make sure that the cables go into the right ports, otherwise it's not going to work. You must set it up in a comfortable space. So, for example, at the corner of an office that has good lighting, that would be wonderful. You've got to bear in mind your ergonomics. Your chair's got to be at a certain angle and a certain height, or you run the risk of having a repetitive strain injury and carpal tunnel syndrome and things that will hurt your body over time as you use the computer. The functionality of a computer is that we use the computer for very specific tasks but because they're multi-use it could be any kind of tasks. We've discussed in great depth the idea of hardware. Hardware is stuff that you can touch, the monitor you can touch, the keyboard you can touch. Software is instructions, it's not generally something that you can touch. Software comes in two major flavors, an operating system like we're going to be learning later, um, which is Windows 7. In terms of humans, that might be your fight or flight mechanism. You don't think about when danger is coming, running away, it just happens. That is your nature. However, when we talk about applications, we're talking about specific uses of the computer and that will be like 
writing a document or um, creating a spreadsheet. In this case, you're following little steps in real life. So it's a bit like making tea. When you get your computer and after it's set up, you will do basically what amounts to the four steps to get the computer going. You'll turn the computer on, the computer will perform a self-test, you'll load the operating system and then all your programs get loaded after that. This has been End User Computing 1. I am Julian. We've just talked about how to get started with computers. I hope you found this informative and I shall see you soon when we do Learning Unit 2. Thank you for watching.